Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Under Rail. In the last episode, I believe we did the job for the cow, the chemical assault unit, and whoo, got to watch the uh, the free drones become more like the free mutants from Armageddon Empire. The gas released. Anyone who breathed it in, it looks like a turn or two later. Uh, turned into a mutant. Uh, at least it was instantaneous, more or less, as opposed to the horrific, drawn-out deaths that occurred for the New Frontier Technologies uh, over in the Black Sea. Speaking of New Frontier Technologies in the Black Sea, in this episode, we're gonna go back over there and begin the well, and begin to do more of that content. We've been over here now for back in normal Underrail for a while. It's been a good amount of fun. Let's head back over to NFT and get some more work done there. Um, at the time of this recording, today is May 2nd, 2020. Uh, and I just want to thank you guys again for uh, for sticking with me this long on the second Underrail playlist of mine. I had intended to possibly have beaten the game at this point by now. I definitely had int originally intended to have beaten it by June. It's looking like that probably won't happen, given the amount of content we still have left to to do. Oh, I should drink some juice. My uploads have really slowed down, and I I feel like I must apologize for that, everyone. I'm uploading an Underreal video now. I think it's every other day or every third day. Um, I'm uploading like one video a day, if that. Uh, I'm there's a, there's a few things which have been going on which are they're not keeping me from from doing from recording as much as I used to. It's just I'm becoming more distracted by other things and focusing on those things. For the past two weeks, it was working on my Heroes Quest. Uh, the Heroes Quest rule re redo, uh, and working on the dungeon levels a little more for it. And it's because of that that I became suddenly in the mood to do something that I haven't done in a very, very long time, in about uh, two decades, I think. I was working on dungeon level 5 for my Heroes Quest, which is a which is going to be a ruined well hmm should I tell you this I'll tell you this so my Heroes Quest board game it's a, a small a small uh, deviation my Heroes Quest board game is going to have branching arcs in the story so depending upon how you complete dungeon level three that will take you down one of two paths which will remerge together again at dungeon level eight. Or seven. I can't remember now. Actually, wait. It's oh, it's in the other room. My 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 flow. My flow. Uh, I have a, a diagram which shows which dungeons will be occurring in which order, depending upon which path the heroes take. Uh, I'm a big fan of this sort of thing. And so, um, right. And so, uh, dungeon five is actually dependent upon which path the heroes took. During their, during their adventure. Uh, if they went down one path, then they would get uh, a, this one ruin in a swamp. If they went down a different path, it would be a different ruin in a, di in a totally separate location, a completely different dungeon level altogether. And so uh, I was working on the map for one of those, the ruin in the swamp, when it's... I suddenly wanted the dungeon to look somewhat like a dungeon I had remembered playing in the Dungeons and Dragons uh, campaign I ran many, many years ago. Oh, one second, uh, I'm, I'm getting confused. Let's go to the dude's, dude's cave home and pick up more juice. There was a... So, ages ago, uh, there had been a magazine that was released by TSR, which was called Dungeon Magazine. And this... This magazine contained uh, modules, basically uh, adventures, that you could run your players through if you liked them or not. Oh, well, I guess if you didn't like it, you wouldn't run through it. But uh, you, were, you weren't sure what you're going to get the week in the, like, 
in advance, and the magazine was, I think it was a bi-monthly magazine, so you'd get one every two months? I'm pretty sure that was it. Uh, I was, uh, my parents, uh, I picked up a, ma a particular issue of it, issue 13, which was the first time I had seen an, an issue of it uh, in the magazine, uh, and I had a little bit of uh, allowance money, or money for my birthday, and so I picked it up. And in, in retrospect, it was probably the best issue of Dungeon Magazine I have, I, I ever had. Uh, I liked all the adventures within it, and the first one in it was called The Ruins of Noel Dyer, I believe is what it was called. And it featured this ruined castle uh, in the middle of like this, uh, I don't know if it was swamp land, but it was an area of uh, brushland or uh, broken lands or something like that. And I, I remembered the castle layout somewhat, but I wanted the whole thing again. And so I, I went online and after hunting for a little bit, I found a website that contained PDFs for every single Dungeon Magazine ever created. Now, back then, when I was uh, Dungeon Mastering, uh, Dungeons & Dragons was out. That's the non-advanced Dungeons & Dragons, just Dungeons & Dragons. That was the, like, I think the black box set. Master level, I think is what that was, had come out. And I think the Immortal one had come out shortly thereafter. This was around, like, 1990, 1989 or so. I was, uh, how old was I? 15? 16? Maybe 14 or so at the time? Um, and when my parents saw I was interested in it, they subscribed me to Dungeon Magazine. So I was subscribed to it for, I think it was three years. Um, and I had quite a, quite a bit of fun reading those adventures. My brothers were my players at the time. And they very much enjoyed uh, playing some of them when I put them on it. And if nothing else, just reading them as well, it turns out. I remember talking with... I, I talked with my brothers just about this a, a few weeks ago. I'm sorry, uh, this week. <laughs> and uh, my brothers remembered uh, the names of some of these dungeons. They remembered how terrible some of them were. They remember me explaining them uh, to them, the ones that we didn't run, run them through. And they, it, was, it was a lot of fun, just reminiscing. So... I decided that I wanted to to hold that Dungeon Magazine in my hand again. And so I went to Amazon, and I found it there. And to my great pleasure, uh, I found that most of the Dungeon Magazines I had had at one point are still there. Ah, oh, here it is. Oh, sorry, are still there. Were available. And so I've spent the past several weeks now, I think this is week three, uh, ordering various dungeon magazines that I used to own when I was young. Now, I began talking about the box set, and then I got distracted. So, in addition to the box sets of Dungeons & Dragons, there was the... Uh, one second, let's go this way. We'll, we'll clear up this hex of the serpents I think are in it. Uh, Dungeon, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons was out, and that... That was what I had been begun running my my brothers through, the through campaigns of that type. Um, for Dungeons and Dragons, this was Second Edition Dungeons and Dragons, and Second Edition D and D is my favorite edition uh, ever made. I mostly because I, I was very familiar with the rules. The rules were somewhat confusing if you weren't, if well, I I don't know how to describe it, but they they were somewhat confusing. Uh, Thacko. For some reason, people didn't understand Thacko. And to be fair to, to those people, like, uh, some things didn't make a whole lot of sense, like a shield plus one actually reduced your armor class by one point, and so on. So I can understand some of the confusion between uh, the way things were worded and how it was applied in the rules. But I liked it in particular because I understood all the rules reasonably well, especially when I was uh, young. Ooh, I think do you have pirates here? Oh, no, you have you, you do? We do! Two pirates. Okay. Oh crap. So they're going to go ahead and they are going to EMP me. I just know it. So let's start by let's get a little closer. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh my god! Oh 
Holy crap, how many pirates are here? The rest of them. The rest of the pirates are here. Okay, well, let's heal ourselves. And now, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to move very far. Um, and I can't do anything about that either. Wow, we may simply lose because I, I may have to run. If only because I have to power my... Oh, you know what, actually? Actually, just this guy, this guy we have to kill. He has a, he has a shotgun, and it's killing us. We're completely out of power. At least we're not dazed. We're at half our hit points, though. That's it. That's all we can do. I don't want to use morphine or anything of the sort. We took way too much damage early on. Actually, we, I think we'll use an adrenaline just so that we're able to maybe kill this razor. We just need, we just need one more good hit on it. Guy. Oh, nice! He's out of- oh, I say like, he's out of ammo, but he'll just be loaded. Sorry, we'll talk more about Dungeons & Dragons uh, in, in a bit. I just want to focus on this fight. So we killed the most dangerous one that's here. So we must have killed one small patrol, and then we bumped into another one that was in this area at the same exact time. I really need this guy to die. We're already out of power, so we shouldn't take any more damage from the EMP grenade. If I don't kill him next, actually next round we have to use some adrenaline. Oh, I just realized my my uh, leviator's not being destroyed. Come on! <laughs> Good, at least one hit. Really did a number on both us and our le le leviator. One single EMP grenade. God, it sucks so much. E everything's been depowered, so we, we have to go back to Aegis Incorporated's docks, basically. Yeah. Oh, oh, we may die here anyway. We may die here because we simply don't have. We, uh, sorry, we might lose our, our ship. I, didn't, I don't have any repair kits with me either. A 
frag grenade on these two to help us deal with them. Go ahead, be careful. Actually, don't, no, no, Tim. You, what, you shouldn't do that. You can't. You can't afford to have to have that grenade hit your hit yourself. killed this guy, we destroyed this scrap jet. We'll, so yeah, so we'll double back. I can throw one, let's do it. Ooh, almost destroyed that ship outright. Ooh, Tim, your ship's almost gone. Right up next to both of them, so you don't take another one of those. Oh my god, 42 hit points left! Alright! Victory! <laughs> slowly, slowly crawl back to Ages of Form. Actually, we can probably dock get some power in all our stuff, all our things. Woo. Oh my god, that was so close. All right, so, uh, we have to charge our hammer. We have to charge our chainsword. Okay, then everything else has to get charged. We lost everything. Fun little ambush from them. Oh, Tim, your, your armor's now going to begin healing you. That's uh, kind of a waste. Should have waited to charge the armor until after I had bandaged myself. Goodness, it takes quite a few bandages to get us back up in tip top shape. Well, that was fun. That was very <laughs> nerve wracking, but fun. Let's recharge our hammer. I have no repair kits for you. Okay. Next, let's charge. Our le Leviator. Do I have a repair system with you? No, I don't. Okay. Well, then let's double back. So I want, I want to be back here anyway, then. I, I want to purchase at least one of those. Actually, we'll need several of them in order to repair all the damage we just took on our Leviator. Good God. <laughs> Practically seven pirates on their jet skis. I think that was... We killed we killed two, I think, already as well? So I think that's the last of their patrols. Okay. Yeah, so I wanted to hold that magazine in my hand again. So I, I ordered it from Amazon. And then once I realized that many other the others were there, even though I have all the PDFs for every single dungeon magazine I could possibly ever want, uh, I still went and ordered them. At least the ones that I was familiar with. And again, I began talking about 2nd edition. Oh. They seem to be having another discussion and are unaware of your presence. Let's listen in. Uh. So. Marcus nods. Yeah? Uh, nothing. Marcus nods again. Lennon scratches his head. Man, my hair's growing really fast. Hmm. Marcus passes his hand over his. Uh. There's some big holes in the tent. Marcus looks around, his eyes fall upon you. Gabriel! <laughs> Wanna stay with you, Marcus? I think they're now out of things to talk to each other about. What do you need? i show you some high-tech stuff. Okay, so... Uh, he'll buy at least that, and I think... He, buy, he will buy some of these. So we can sell him one of those, get some blues, get some sticky... Actually, I don't care about the blues as much as I care about more batteries and the like. Just 
barely can't afford all four. How many energy devices? Two? That'll have to do. Lattleman, do you sell repair kits for our jet ski, or do you not? Because if not, then we're leaving again. Okay, we're leaving to go back, all the way back to Core City, so we can actually purchase some repair kits for our jet ski. God, that battle. That was, that was both amazing and terrifying at the same time for us. Okay, so having that magazine in my hand, flipping through it, Remembering the text, remembering the pictures, just uh, even the smell of the magazine, the paper. It suddenly put me in the mood to Dungeon Master a campaign again. So I reached out to a few of my friends who I've known, and they would love to play again. I've got one of my brothers interested, actually all three are interested in in it, but uh, some of them have children now, and so uh, it's just not going to happen uh, probably as regularly as any of, any of us would like uh, due to kids. That's fine. Uh, another one of my players from the old campaign I ran in college is interested, and a friend of mine, a co-worker at work who hasn't played much Dungeons & Dragons is also interested. So I began working on a campaign again. Now, way back when in college, I had begun working. Well, let's let's back up a little bit more. When it comes to second edition, uh, there were many things about second edition that I loved, but there were many, many more things about second edition that I disliked. And one second, I want people repair kits. Oh my God, we're gonna, we need several of these. Uh, how many? Twelve. I need at I need at least five to repair the damage we just took. How expensive is that? Oh. I have nothing that he's going to want to buy from me. Let's do it. Almost a thousand dollars. Seven hundred sixty-seven charons. Well, it'll be worth it. So, I mean, it has to be worth it. Either I need another plasma leviator, which is way more expensive than just buying repair kits for us, or we need to run around with a junk jet, which I refuse to do. So, we'll go and repair our our leviator. So. <clears throat> What I had done for... Back up a little bit more, Tim. So, my brother Dave was uh, big into Dungeons & Dragons as well. And he had designed a world. Um, he spent time getting some, some notes about the different races and how they worked and so on. And uh, this was... What I find funny about, about what he had done is, in particular, uh, he loves to bring this up whenever whenever anyone asks him about his, his campaign or Dozen Dragons, that uh, when he, he, he designed uh, orcs, but he designed them in... Some, you know the World of Warcraft orcs? Those are basically my brother Dave's orcs. It's almost exactly the way that he, de he envisioned orcs when he designed them for his world. Uh, and, of course, when he, when he designed this stuff, this was before Warcraft 3. Uh, was out. So the orcs were basically still mindless killing machines coming from another dimension uh, for Warcraft 1 and Warcraft 2. Well, not mindless, but uh, bloodthirsty animals. That wasn't, uh, for Bubba Dave, they were more honor, uh, more, they had more sense of honor. Uh, but they had shamans, they loved the sea and, the, and boats and stuff like that. Uh, in any case, I'm getting Babel. So, uh, Dave had a bunch of ideas for the world, but he didn't, he didn't, uh, make any character classes or the like. And for him, I got the impression it was mostly a, a, a thought experiment. It was trying to get a, trying to see if he could write a world in such a way that he liked it. Well, I took his ideas and I made character classes uh, out of some of them. This gave me the perfect opportunity to redesign or rework a ton of things that I really disliked about second edition. And, and just in, I guess, Dungeons and Dragons, some of it in general. Uh, in particular, spellcasting classes. I've never been a fan of the... Uh, like, okay, well, first off, uh, Dozen Dragons might be completely different now than what I'm about to describe. In fact, I would imagine it probably is. 
In the past... Oh my god, we're gonna need so many of these. In, in the past... Uh, okay, let's see if I can describe this in a way that makes sense. There, there is no way. <laughs> I'll try any- I'll try anyway! So, to cast... Mm, let's talk about... M magic users is what they were called, or wizards. To a wizard... Uh, could cast only a limited number of spells based on their character's level. Uh, they could only do that a certain amount of times per day. Or rather, per... Hmm. Let's say that you were a level 1 ma uh, mage. Uh, according to the, the, the spell chart for 2nd edition, this allowed you to cast one single spell. Once you cast that spell, you couldn't cast any others. You were, you were done. Until you had time to mem uh, mesmerize your spells again. And so to mesmerize a spell would take 4 hours plus then 15 minutes per spell per spell level of the spell. So as an example, I believe at 5th level, a mage or wizard or magic user or a specialist wizard like an illusionist or abjurist or something or summoner they would gain access to I, th I want to say it was I think it was three first level spells to second level spells or ranks I guess we call them ranks that might be easier to way to describe them uh, so three first rank spells two second rank spells and one third rank spell if you cast one third rank and two first rank and you wanted to be able to cast those again, you needed to rest for 5 hours and 15 minutes in game time. That's a stupid! <laughs> I hated that entire mechanic so much. It, it struck me as being extremely uh, punishing to low-level casters. Clerics had something, uh, Clerics had the same restrictions, only they had a slightly easier time of it, because at least uh, Clerics gained bonus spells dependent upon their statistics. Uh, if you had a high wisdom score in 2nd edition, you would begin gaining the ability to cast extra spells. Like, uh, I think at a wisdom of... Oh, what was it? I think at wisdom 13? So, uh, a stat. I should talk about stat line really quick. Uh, your stat lines... Where am I going? Your stat lines were... Uh, strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, constitution, charisma. Your stat lines would be any... Well, it depends upon the number system, the point system that the DM was using, but almost always uh, in 2nd edition... Well, I guess it depends upon the Dungeon Master campaign, but this tended to be, and in the rules, it uh, it was, it, I guess, recommended. Um, the level, uh, a stat line of 3 to 18 for the average player character. Um, eight, a 3 means your character was effectively, uh, like, a 3 strength. You could barely lift, like, a gallon of milk. Um, your max press might be, like, 10, 15 pounds. On a... a a strength of 18 would be a weightlifter, for for example. Uh, you could lift an incredible amount of weight. So, oh, uh, you, this is, is this the right way? This is the wrong way. You don't want to be here. <clears throat> this leads to the pirate base. We don't want to be here. So, oh, my food expired. We should eat something. Oh, was it? Okay, so a Wisdom of 13 gave a Cleric one extra first rank uh, rank 1 spell. A Wisdom of 14 would give them an additional extra rank 1 spell. A Wisdom of 15 would grant them one second rank spell, and they still keep the, the bonus first level spells from the... What am I doing? From their first... Two points. Uh, two points. No, that's not what I wanted to say. From their first, uh, from the first other. Mm, I'm almost going to stop. Sorry, but I have to stop and think. <laughs> I'm trying to drive the, the plasma levator while I'm trying to talk, and I, apparently I can't do both at the same time. Right, you, as you leveled wisdom, a cleric would gain 
more, uh, uh, should I say what a cleric is? A cleric is like a priest. They, their spells work differently than a mage's spells did in 2nd edition. Their spells were granted to them by their gods that they prayed to. A mage was granted their magic by manipulating magical energies around them, and the spells that they gained were inside their spell books. So a, a cleric, uh, when the higher rank of their wisdom, the more ranks of, sp uh, the more extra spells they would get, they would, they would keep, they would gain all the extra spells listed for their wisdoms, up to and including their current wisdom score. Wisdoms? W wisdom stat. So if they had a wisdom of 15, they would collect the bonus two first rank spells for levels 13 and 14, plus the second rank for level 15. So they would have a little more power at the beginning of a game, and felt in that regard a little more usable uh, for the first starting adventure as well. With a mage, you usually just had sleep. That was it. That was your spell. Sleep. One of the most powerful spells you could get at first level because odds are you were fighting first level things. And sleep would make uh, any, uh, I think it was up to 20, one hit die creatures that, mm, I, know, I don't want to have to explain that. Let's just go with, uh, that means that they're extremely weak creatures to fall asleep without a saving throw, which meant that the rest of the party could walk up and slit their throats in cold blood. Yep. Awful good, people. Awful good. And so, uh, yeah, that's, uh... Wait, am I in the right spot? No, I want to be over here! You're in the wrong spot again, Tim! <laughs> what the heck? Way to waste time. By the time you arrive at the health facility, the, the bunch of us are going to attack again. That's the quarry down there. That's not where we want to be. So, what was I talking about? <laughs> uh, right, spells. So, uh, no one had chosen a wizard when I had been running my campaigns. Um, with my brothers, that was before my brother Dave had made a world. This was when, this was, uh, my brother Dave made his his world and I made a bunch of character classes based on it and worked on a, a ton of rules. It took me an entire summer to revamp a, a bunch of the rules for the, for the campaign in a way that I was happy with it. But I came up with a mana system for mages instead. So they could cast multiple spells a day and the higher level they were, the more mana they would gain. Different ranks of spells would cost different amounts of mana, and the mage would recover mana slowly over time. They could drink mana potions to rapidly recover their mana if they so desired. Um, they were still limited to what spells they could cast based upon those that were in their spell book, but they didn't have to memorize any of those spells. They could just cast any of the ones that they knew were in their spell book. In this way, they didn't have to preload the spell for the day. Generally, that's gonna that because generally that means that you're gonna mesmerize magic missile and sleep and maybe a detect magic or read magic, but you're putting all your points in those. So, uh, but this gave them more flexibility and would allow them to cast more spells depending upon what they wanted to cast. There was still a little balancing I have to do on it, um, and none of my character, none of my players played a mage, but they all commented that this seemed a lot more fun if they were to play a mage character class. In addition to that, uh, most of the mages are specialists. They all gain a special staff when they reach a certain level, which grants them a cheaper mana cost for the spells they specialize in. Um, there are six, I think six, maybe might be nine, or eight, uh, schools of magic. More if you possess the Tome of, uh, the Tome of Magic, a, uh, a different book for these for second edition, which included wild magic and elemental spells for mages. But, uh, I worked on some unique spells for each of the different specialists and rules for them as well. It was a lot of fun to come up with that sort of thing, and I think it makes them a lot more powerful. For clerics, I really liked what the cleric classes had what had been done to them with the Dragonlance book, a module, a book, rule set that had come out. Uh, and we'll have to talk about more about this in a later episode, because we're about to do the Lumerian Health Center. We're started at least, and this means that there's a lot of talking in here, so I don't think I'll get the opportunity to talk about what I was just talking about more. Alright, let's get, let's get going. Please select your desired floor, P-Bridges. Utility and Maintenance. 
Nope. Submarine dock. Patient ward. Genetics birth center maternity pediatrics morgue. Neurology, psionics, orthomopol... I can't pronounce that. Ophthalmology, dermatology, orthopedics. General labs, radiology, oncology, endocrinology. Main reception desk, surgery, intensive care, psychiatry, implantation, administration. Welcome to the Lumbarian Health Center, everyone. As a heads up, oh well, no, I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't say anything. But I will say this. This was perhaps my favorite area of the entire Black Sea to do. I really enjoyed the theme of this place. Let's get started. I haven't done this, actually, since Garrett was last in here. Destroyed robots, abandoned medical beds, wheelchairs, destroyed. Place has seen better days. Prescription for 250 milligrams of Baffare Dola Baneral Capvic. You cannot read this. Sealed shut door, security cameras which are which are not operative. Electronic lock, which is also not powered. Security office. Oh, we have hacking. Batteries. That's wonderful. Strongman called Death Man. Some bolts on the desk, nothing else. A short sovereign. That'll be worth quite a bit of money fully repaired. We'll take it. More batteries. Hey, that this makes this place worth uh, worth it just walking into. Welcome, Pete Bridges. Warning. Lumerian Health Center is under full lockdown. Warning. Anti-contamination measures have been engaged. You do not have permission to access security-related options. Lift lockdown. You do not have permission to access this control. Minimum clearance level required is C5. Contact Active Security Supervisor. No active security supervisors detected. There may be temporary communication problems preventing this. Please try again later. Summon available servants. Let's beat up a few things. Available servants have been summoned. The only one we saw was the statue out here. There she is. She's the receptionist, apparently. Welcome to the Lemarian Health Center. How may I help you, sir? This is a hospital, right? Yes, sir. This is where healthcare services used to be provided to all Lemarian citizens. Unfortunately, none of the medical staff is available anymore. They are deceased, sir. Everyone is deceased. 
The currently active robotic staff is not capable of helping you beyond providing the most basic first aid. If possible, please seek help at another health facility, sir. We are terribly sorry for your inconvenience. So what happened here exactly? A rather catastrophic event, sir. The entirety of the Lumerian Health Center staff, patients, and sheltered Lumerian citizens have been exterminated. How? By Biocorp armed personnel, of course, sir. No, I said how, not who exterminated them. My apologies. The staff has been exterminated by an airborne mugent, sir, delivered through the ventilation system. The mugent caused rapid physical and psychological changes in all who came in contact with it. The result of these changes was death, some through murder, some through suicide, the rest through damage caused by the abnormal, highly destructive transformation itself. Which you have seen by the when we murdered all the free drones. What can you tell me about yourself? My current purpose is to serve as a substitute for the receptionist in his or her absence. When I am not needed, I am in standby mode, resting on my charging pedestal. I have been in standby mode for 249 years, 7 months, 14 days, and 12 hours until the moment of your arrival, sir. Can you feel anything emotionally? You haven't talked to a human being in more than two centuries. Do you miss your former masters? We do not address them as masters, but as sirs or ma'ams, sir. And I do not miss them. The majority of servant models have not been designed to miss. Majority? Some servant models have been outfitted with more advanced emotion processing units, but those are quite uncommon, sir. I am not one of those models. However, I think at least one or two such units have been assigned to the Lemurian Health Center, if that is of any help, sir. What can you tell me about Lumeria? That is not a question I can respond to, sir. I am very sorry. Why not? My current purpose is to serve as a substitute for the receptionist in his or her absence. The only information I can give you is that related to the Lumerian Health Center. But these two are related. Lumerian Health Center is a part of Lumeria, right? But Lumeria is not a part of the Lumerian Health Center. There seems to be a misunderstanding between us, sir. Please allow me to repeat my previous response. My current purpose is to serve as a substitute for the receptionist in his or her absence. The only information I can give you is that related to the Lumerian Health Center. What's behind the two gates behind the reception? Laboratory ward offices. A laboratory ward offices. Elevator leading to the morgue, sir. Just the morgue, sir. What's behind the western gate? General services ward, sir. Pharmacy. General practice examination rooms. Psychiatric examination. Microchip implantation. And the east gate? Emergency and surgical ward, sir. There you will find the emergency room, head surgeon's office, operating rooms, surgical pre preparation rooms, and a storage room, sir. Is there a way to open the gates? The Lumerian Health Center is under emergency lockdown, and the gates between the different wards have been sealed. Until the lockdown has been lifted, the only way to open any of the gates is by doing so forcefully. For this, you could seek the help of one of the strongmen. But do know that you may need to justify the destruction of common property to the Supervisory Council. You aren't strong enough. Handmade models were not designed to exert the same amount of force necessary to open these types of gates, sir. Where can I find a strong man? I'm afraid I cannot tell you with certainty, sir. My advice would be to personally search the floor for an available strongman. Is your AI in order? How can I search the floor when all the gates are locked? But sir, the gate to the emergency and surgery wards is already open. Can you not see it? It's not open. May I ask that you verify the current state of the gate in question, sir? I'll check it out.
you feel pressure mounting inside your skull. You blink to reveal a new addition to your reality. Before you stands a young woman, a doctor wearing a white lab coat. Her entire body, hair, face, clothes, name tag as well, everything is smeared with a green viscous blood. It is oozing out of her wounds and toward the floor, never reaching it, but merely fading to oblivion. Her expression, a plea for salvation, if not through action, then through observation. We do not have the willpower to resist her. And if we try, I think things will go badly for us. That said, I do not want to resist this. This was some of the most horrifying things that I have read in a, in a game. And so uh, we're going to observe her wherever she meets us. Basically, there's a ghost that's materialized in front of us and is trying to communicate with us, if we want to view it that way. The world darkens. The woman is glowing and dissolving. Her once lovely plump face, now bathed in green radiance, is degenerating into a visage of ineffable torment. She is tr frantically trying to hold it in place with her formless, useless hands. Her gleaming hair is stretching into streams of odious slime and abandoning her scalp, while her charmingly green eyes are becoming repulsively greener, more swollen and less human. She cries and cries, caustic tears rolling down her departing cheeks, but her cries are silent. Silent, thankfully, for even if void of sound, her misery is great enough to clot your own very blood. Slowly, the horrid scene fades away, much like her oozing blood did, but not to oblivion, and certainly not before scarring your eyes. The pressure in your head is gone. Head surgeon. And a key to get them there. Operating room one. Locked. storage. Decent rifle, we'll take that. I haven't done so, but we are able to make weapons and then sell them. Even weapons, of course, that I don't, uh, like, uh, range weapons, guns, etc., etc. I search this one. What I did. I guess to recharge our Axor. Oh, there's the Death Man again. He's not hostile. We'll leave him there at the moment. when it comes to medical rooms like this. Well, uh, first off, we had, do have COVID-19 spreading around, but I believe when uh, when last I had been in hospitals, several, I've been several of them, of course, uh, thanks to my uh, TIAs over uh, a year and a half ago now, um, I had been notified that most hospitals were attempting to, instead of having there be two beds per hospital room, trying to get them down to just one bed each. In this way, people are not, with different conditions, are not in the same rooms as uh, with each other. You don't want to have someone who has something contagious in the room with someone who was there for uh, like a, a surgery. Well, everything else seems to be locked, so let's talk to Mr. Deathman. We need a strongman anyway. You see horror in the strongman's face, even though that is mechanically impossible. 
You are not afraid, sir. No. You should be afraid, sir. Danger is all around us. They roam these hallways still, sir. Who? Forgive me for being so disrespectful, but have you lost your damn mind, sir? Have you not seen them, sir? The ones who used to be like you and me. The same ones who once saved lives, but now end them. For mindlessness and decay have produced in them but a single blinding urge to destroy all that is different from themselves. You have either been very, very lucky, or you're lying, sir. Hold on. Are you talking about the robots? Forgive me again, sir. He grabs you by your arms and effortlessly pulls you closer. Robots? What kind of nonsensical question is that? Don't you understand, sir? Look into my eyes and tell me what you see. Do you see life? Or do you see death? I see nothing. Sir. You stupid bastard! Can't you see it's both? Both! My eyes. They're just like... Her eyes. And his eyes. And their eyes. He averts his eyes and releases you. Uh, forgive my foul mouth and possessed hands, and forgive me for not being able to help you with what will befall you in a moment. In my life, there is both life and death, and that is why I'm afraid. I am not afraid for, of life. I wish to live. I am not afraid of death. I wish to die. But both. Unbearable. But your arrival... It might just bring me closer to the only one of those two which I can now embrace with certainty. If you'd excuse me, and do take care of yourself, sir. Okay, everyone. Let's do this. Hand mage and strong. Okay, so we don't need our shield for shield of uh, shield maidens for hand maidens. I need to find a place where I can fight them one at a time. That will be in a doorway so that they can only reach me one at a time. So that's going to be this doorway. Let's sprint. Toward it. Yeah, Handmaids cannot damage us whatsoever, thanks to our amazing po our, our power armor. Let's move into the room, recharge our hammer, and wait for them. The handmaids went first, so I'll expect handmaids in here before the strong men. Right, this is acceptable. There's a bunch of them out there. We'll stay here. Exactly like this.
both hit us, but that'll be okay. Okay, wow, that went a lot easier than it went with Garrett. It helped that I knew this was gonna happen. All right, so let's begin charging things. We'll charge our armor that I didn't realize was a little unpowered. Whatever they've got, we're sticking it in our pockets. What was, the, what was the expression from that game? It's, it's the game I, I, I semi... I, I paraphrase the uh, the quote from it all the time. Uh, candy or... M money or candy, it's going in my pockets, I think is what it was. It was at the end of the Vampire Bloodlines game. When you... Oh, if you were playing on playing that, you haven't. Skip. Skip ahead. Like, two minutes. Okay, you ready? Even, uh, weird surgical clamp. Even the tool itself looks confused about its purpose. All right, here we go. So, uh, at the end of that game, uh, the, when the sarcophagus was brought up to the Ventru Tower and the prince was going to open it, you have the option of selecting that, like money or pockets, whatever it's, whatever it is in this is going in my pockets or something like that. Money or pockets? Money or candy? Whatever is in this is going in my pockets or something like that is what you can say if you play the Malkavian. But if you select that, that's the uh, that's the worst ending you can you can take if I recall correctly. What a great game that was. Sorry, I'm not talking. Uh, this time I'm keeping it in theme, because this is a, in case you haven't realized by now, this is a creepy section of the game. I really love horror games of various kinds. Not every single one of them, but I do tend to like them very much. Um, what were the last ones I played? Oh man, it's been a while. I was playing through Soma. I think I might have talked about it here briefly as well. But... <laughs> oh. I can't actually complete it. This is the stupidest thing in the world, but it's 100% it's accurate, so I'm, I'm, we might as well talk about it while I'm doing this. So, some games now, games that have parts in them which are very, I find very frightening, uh, cause my anxiety to spike. This, in turn, causes my blood pressure to skyrocket. This means that I will have a, a transitory ischemic attack or a stroke because of a video game. So I can't play scary games any longer. At least not if they're too scary. Or I have to, or I can only play them in short bursts. So in Soma, I'm at this one part where I have to sneak past these creatures, which they don't see very well, but they hear you very well. And they're very frightening looking, and they stomp around so you know where they are, and they make sounds at all times. You throw things to make them think you're in one direction, you go in different ones, but the area is so frightening, it's the, or I find it so scary, that I, I can't play it. Not without my, my anxiety spiking. It's stupid. I hate it, but there it is. Headache. Pain delibitate, oh, debilitates you without warning. You feel it reverberating deep inside your abdomen, as though your intestines have become home to a mass of excruciating worms. The pain is growing, yet you are falling apart. Let the pain tear you apart. You see or hear nothing that could be the cause of this maddening pain. You stare at your body, but you are visibly whole. Yet you are losing yourself one piece at a time. Your arms feel as though they are bare of flesh, and that they are merely exposed bones being sanded down to the marrow by nothing more than passing air. Bones that would scream if they had voices with which to do so. 
Your skin, or what is left of it, is peeling away in strips, one after the other, coming closer and closer to releasing your vernacular innards all over the floor, and your face has almost kissed it. It's our faces sloughing off, like being oozed, I believe. As the suffering consumes the last bits of your sanity, you collapse. Capitulate to this inexplicable decay of your body. You are now a repugnant, morbid pile of writhing guts, a stomach churning sludge of your former self, a co collocation of disintegration. The pain does not cease, even though your nerves feel no more. You see but the distant ceiling, but then your eyes begin to dissolve. Something is eating away at the edges of your vision until it becomes narrower and narrower, contracting toward the center, until darkness consumes your whole existence. Then you take a deep breath, and you feel your body again. You were lying on the floor, but you were alive and whole. The pain is gone, but the memory of it writhes inside you still. That would probably be like getting dry socket every single way, every single place all over your body. Uh, dry socket is a condition you can get whenever you have a tooth pulled. If the clot doesn't take the uh, and falls away, then where your tooth was removed, uh, the bone there will be exposed, and every breath you pull will cause air to run over that bone. And, oh, I've heard that the pain is excruciating. Like, you will do anything imaginable to have that pain stop. Oh. Which reminds me, I need to have three wisdom teeth pulled at some point in the future. A receptionist. How may I help you, sir? I seem to be perceiving strange, unreal things ever since I came here. Is something going on here that I should know about? Are you sure what you are experiencing is not, in fact, due to errors in your perception or cognition, sir? Human beings are by their very nature weakly rational, and are thus subject to a variably relative interpretation of reality. Completely sure. I'm afraid you cannot help her, sir. What? I think you misunderstood me. I said I'm afraid I cannot help you, sir. I am not capable of performing a psychiatric examination, and no members of the medical staff who are currently available can do so either. We are sorry for your inconvenience. Have a splendid day, sir. I remember getting chills with that the very first time that is so well done stig like you'll never watch a single a single video of mine but oh this that this place is amazing the writing here is amazing i absolutely love it Place, lots of drugs we could use and, and or need. This door won't budge. Feels like something is blocking from the other side. Force the door open. Whatever is behind the door is proving to be immovable the harder you try. Eventually you give up. This door will not open. Knock on it. You raise your hand. Knock gently and cautiously. Well, you weren't expecting much after all. But 13 strength? 14 strength, that still was not good enough to open that door. We have no lock pickings for not getting in there either. We only need a key to access the microchip implantation extraction unit.
Oh, there's a strut, a, a man right here. I did not even notice him. Hello. Uh, normally, I wouldn't mind having this to make caltrops, but no, we will pass. I don't have the. I don't want to carry 60 pounds worth of metal on me at the moment. I don't need those either. We should, however, recharge. Oops, not that. Those we should definitely take. We can recycle those swords. Quite a few parts. And we should probably make some repair kits. And then we can actually repair some of our equipment that is a little damaged from that fight we got in with the pirates. The servant is trying to pry open the gate with his hands. Do you need my assistance, sir? I am unable to assist you until after I have opened this gate. Why are you trying to open it? I'm, I'm attempting to save lives, sir. There are sirs and ma'ams on the other side of this gate that need my help. But there's a large hole in the wall you can use to get out of this room. You do not understand, sir. There are sirs and ma'ams on the other side of this gate. I need to open it if I am to reach them. But there's another way. Are you blind? Sir, you should seek medical assistance immediately. You are displaying symptoms of severely reduced cognitive ability, quite possibly due to the effects of the mutagen. I'd carry you to a physician myself, but I have to open this gate first. There is a massive opening in that wall over there. You tin-headed puppet. Why don't you listen to me? Sir, please. The sirs and ma'ams are on the other side of this gate. They require my assistance. I must go through this gate, and there is nothing you or anyone else can do to misguide me. It is my directive, and I am incapable of defying it. I'll leave you to your work. Thank you, sir. Okay. Interesting. So when I was with Garrett, I didn't actually tell him about this opening. I just made the assumption that it shut behind me. <laughs> and I was like, nope, not turning around and seeing that. Not turning around and seeing that, but it is there. So he believes he must get through this gate. Can we recharge him? Actually, there were, uh, we can probably use one of these. Wow, it's going to take a lot of power. Talk to him again and just ask. Uh, you seem to be struggling with the gate. I am afraid you are right, sir. Putting aside the fact that my actuators have not been serviced in more than 250 years, my power cell state of charge has dropped to suboptimal levels for the task at hand. My pedestal, which serves as a charging base, has malfunctioned, and I have not been able to recharge in a period of time I am for some reason unable to specify, sir. Can you stand on another statue's pedestal and charge yourself? I could, sir, but all of them are on the other side of this gate. There is no way to reach it, to reach one until I get it open. So we know we, we can recharge it. In fact, we began to. I didn't did realize we have, we have a strength check. Let me help you. I have a crowbar. Just be careful not to injure yourself, sir. The combined strength of the trickly powered actuators and tristofate powered muscles is enough to begin separating the gate. After which, the strongman steps in between the two segments and pushes them apart all on his own. The gate is open, sir. I must proceed. Wait. Can you open the gates behind the reception for me while you're at it? The morgue? That is exactly where I'm headed, sir. Follow me, but do take great care. There are mutated sirs and ma'ams right past this gate. If they surprise you, I may not be able to react in time to assist you, sir. The morgue? Who mentioned the morgue? You did, sir. Time is running out. It is necessary that we make haste. Be careful, sir. 
you hear words. You hear them in your mind. They are being spoken by a voice that is not yours. The other voice. The words may sound articulate and meaningful. They may be carried by a tone that is rich and pleasing. But they are not your words. And it is not your voice uttering them. So you address it, subconsciously, but the other voice doesn't stop or even pause. It carries on as though you were silent. You don't wish to stop or pause either. This is your mind, your refuge, your realm. Interloping vocals must be confronted. But before you're able to even finish that thought, you come to the realization that the dialogue you've just engaged in is actually... beautiful. It is a contranuptial dance of sentience. A captivating, profound, and fluent interchange in which the two independent and adventurous melodic voices, your voice and the other voice, caress each other and give birth to mesmerizing harmony. Beauty of sound. You like this. You can't not. And as soon as you sink into the enjoyment that sprang into your mind like an unexpected epiphany, the other voice's timber changes. Keep speaking. Keep listening. The other voice drops in pitch, becoming coarse and foul. Its previously impeccable rhythm is now but vulgar syncopation clashing with your fluent lines, turning it. I can't pronounce this. Euphony into nightmarish cacophony as the hostile notes claw at each other in dissonance. A speedy decomposition of this colloquy is taking place, and there is nothing you are able to do to rectify it. Then, without missing a single grim beat, the words lose all their meaning. You cannot differentiate one word from another, and all you can understand, if barely, is something you'd rather never hear again. Now slurred and incomprehensible, the other voice rings with mounting subhumanity. Its corruption is contagious, because you comprehend in horror that your voice has turned into hollow, despondent hollering as well. Dread grows inside you as you realize that you are forgetting the melodious beauty of the human voice and what those words you had spoken so delightfully meant. Your thoughts are slowing down, and the two voices merge into monophony, droning monophony. You can now only vaguely remember random disjointed syllables you had once been uttering, devoid of most of their meaning and purpose. But you don't even care anymore. Who could miss something so distant and vague? The sounds you are making now are just an extension of your breathing. It's mere idiosyncratic embellishments. Concealing suppressed cries of pain. And then you hear your own rapid breath, clear and unweighted. You speak them, words, just random words, only to hear what they sound like. The melody is there. But the timber of your voice has lost some of its overtones. Lost some of its life. Oops, I misclicked, and now we're gonna be in combat. Oh, I don't want to hit the other strawman though, so uh, if I walk up here, I'm worried that our lightning would damage the other one. So we... Oh, I could... Uh, I could sort it. Let's try sorting this. Well, that's, that's a shame. Uh, we missed the... Uh, the exposed weakness, so unfortunately the chain sword doesn't do enough damage to strongman to warrant using it now. If I hit with that, that would be wonderful. the body, search the rest of this floor, since the door's opened. With Garrett, 
At this point, I began to suspect that we would have more of these things would activate, and I put traps down in front of all of them, and it allowed me to sneak out of this uh, location without uh, any of them actually touching me. Advanced tailoring kit. That does mean that I don't think I searched, like, this room, for example. Wait, did I search all of those doors? I don't know if I searched these two down here. Let's check them. I see one of them at least has a bathroom. Something's blocking it from the other side. Oh, it did open one of the gates. I thought we had to talk to the receptionist for that. All right, down we go. You have a strong surge moving through your body. It starts at the front of your brain and radiates away, passing through every organ and reaching every tissue and every cell, even if they are located in the remotest ends of your being. You open your eyes even though you are certain that they had already been opened, and you see veins, oddly blue veins with membranes stretched thinly between them. Through this layer of flesh, you see light. Awake to your new existence. You surrender to the senses. You can smell again, that scent that is redolent of death. You can hear again, that pulse of a somber heart. You can taste again, that vile acidity. You try to move, struggle with all your might, but you are unable to, not until one of your arms victoriously rises into the air. You feel it, and see its shadow through the fine tissue. You reach for this fleshy mass impeding your vision and grasp it like a cobweb, pulling it aside so that your eyes may fully bathe in light. It blinds you temporarily, but you adore it nevertheless. Your vision is now clear, and you feel motion everywhere. You feel as though you're floating in a sea of corporeal waves. You must see it, so you slowly turn your eyes and gaze at it. And faint. You open your eyes even though you are sure they had already... No. You remember it now. You fainted. You remember... Horror. Utter horror. But you must look again no matter what. As you lay those fearful eyes upon yourself again, the shock surges through you like the energy that woke you from your timeless slumber. The feeling shakes you not unlike a bowl of living jelly, from which you, in fact, might not be so different. You look abnormal, malformed, oddly blue and disgustingly red and tumorously green. You're unable to recognize most of you, or at least what you think is you. Everything is moving, voluntarily and not, but you are not alone. I'm oh, sorry, but you are alone. You are alone. So much motion, yet it's all a single soul. You are alone, and you will stay alone. This reminds me, now that I have a time to do this again, of the nightmares in the Quest for Glory 4 game. Called. I can't remember. Something shadows or shadow something. The you would have these uh, again if you're somehow playing Quest for Glory Four. Not that I think you are, or you intend to. Skip ahead like two minutes or so. Uh, in that game, uh, oh crap! Uh, in that game, you end up spending the night uh, more than once at this garden, which was the creation of this powerful mage called Irana, and while you're sleeping there, you have these dreams that begin pleasant, um, like you, uh, you're dancing on a hill, and as you dance, flowers spring out, uh, spring up around you, and, uh, and so on, because this is the things that Irana had done. And then 
it becomes a nightmare as things change around her and like she's robbed of her of her life and it describes like how she like uh, she can't taste or see anymore how the cold wraps around itself and it's because she's uh, trapped with this horrific uh, demon or an ancient god if you will like a, 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 a outer being like a Cthulhu type creature that she banished it's a uh, I really enjoyed those uh, those entire dream sequences oh there's multiples of them. Alright, let's shield and wait. Oh, it is. Still handmaidens. want power to fight uh, the straw man with. Your presence is considered rude, sir. Your presence is considered dead. You don't have a presence any longer. Let's recharge our hammer. Yeah, so that, uh, the speaking one in particular reminds me of that. That's so well done. I loved that, that game. That was my favorite quest for glory. I still, still need to play the fifth one at some point. I have not played the fifth one for longer than, like, ten minutes. Psy booster, Psyderm. A medical patch for Psy users addicted to abusing their power. It's expired, though. Addicted to abusing their power. I guess that would be all Psy users. This must be um, the Psionics lab. You can tell by the bullets. Interesting that we can actually get through a few doors that Garrett could not. You might not remember. Uh, I based Garrett on the Garrett from the Thief series. So he had lockpicking, but he had absolutely no hacking. Let's take all of that. That's our weight. Uh, getting close to our max, but we can still, so far we're still good. That looks like a MRI. Yep, an MRI. I guess we're about to find out if there's any more of them around here. Ooh! I didn't realize it was a, there was a whatchamacallit there. So, in any case, I hear the, elect the electricity. Oh, it's just a fuse box. I mean, lock picking today. The, labeled, the label indicates this is to be the transformer for the nearby magnetic resonance imaging scanner. The machine is fully powered. We store power to it. You open the power box to see nothing but a mass of cobwebs littered with dead or dying insects. You're going to have to clear the view if you hope to achieve anything. Clear it. You pick up a rusty 20 centimeter long rod from the ground and use it to tear the cobwebbery. Innumerable eight-legged critters skitter away unhappily, and after a minute or so, you're left with something resembling a macabre cotton candy. You can now get to work. Repair the transformer with an advanced electronic kit. 
Fortunately, the winding cores and the bushing are all in order, as troubleshooting those would be lengthy, troublesome process. Instead, it is the electrical optical tap controller, a component which controls the output voltage, that is causing the problems. After replacing a few faulty electronic components and returning everything in their proper position, you flip the power switch and witness three columns of LEDs light up with a pleasant bluish hue. The label indicates this is to be the transformer. Oh, okay, so we have powered it back on. How many of those do I have left, by the way? Two more, okay. And we can probably break down this wall. We have plenty of juice in our... Oh, I don't actually remember. Oh, hello. Something is here. Jerk. Anything else down here? You just wanted to interrupt me, huh? Let's search these cabinets. As long as we're here now. Quality stuff here. This stuff will be worth quite a bit when we bring it back to Core City and sell it. A key. Microchip implantation room key. Yet another key. We've been playing for a long time, but I like to finish the health center, or at least this portion of it, the creepy parts, uh, in this episode. So we're gonna we're gonna make this an extra long episode. I suppose that'll make up for not uploading as much under rail, or hope it does to you guys. Oh no, I'm out of the small, uh, small power cells. All right, so let's come back to this. Oh. I'd assume that those doors were locked when I saw the destructible door. So, I can explain this hallway to you guys. I've been on many an MRI machine. Uh, in fact, I have to do another one, if I recall correctly. Uh, in order to, What was I checking? I think I'm having a small bowel flow through. So I have to drink some barium fluid, I believe is what it's called. And after a bit, uh, that will get through my intestines, and then I will be put into an MRI machine. They'll then inject some contrast in me, if I recall correctly, and that will let them scan uh, my intestines, looking for polyps or problems uh, with it. These rooms would be places where I would go when I walk into the facility. And I would get dressed into the gown there, and my stuff would be stored into a locker uh, in these places. And I, and I would wait until I'm called. Uh, it, they'd be curtains, not doors, though, but I'm pretty sure that's what this hallway represents. Oh, yeah. We, uh, we shouldn't power it on. <laughs> we are, uh, we're wearing metal. So, uh, the MRI, uh, it's a magnetic scanner after all. Uh, that will draw all metal to it, which is probably why we were fatigued. It's probably used to help you fight, uh, fight enemies. I did? I, no, I don't think I did. I think I, I got distracted by the scanner. Ornate Lumerian Cutlery. Oh, we were we great right that. No lock picking. Those get to stay there. We're almost done with this place, I believe, everyone. We might have one more uh, room to do. The display button is broken, and 
all the floor labels but one are unreadable. voice is whispering, yet its plea is deafening. Kill me. just witnessed and have been witnessing all the agonizing suffering that this poor girl has been in for the past 200 something years. You better believe we're going to kill her if we get a chance to put her out of her misery. the ventilation shaft. I don't know if we have to open to go through it. Oh. <laughs> this. We have the hacking. This room is like, one of these rooms is filled with cold stuff, if I recall correctly. This is it. I think that will, I think we can get it out of the room. If I just wait out here, it will eventually fade away. I want the dead security captain searched. It might not, though. That might just go everywhere. Like, that might not fade. Administration. I think we can just rush it, Tim. Whatever he's got, it's in our pockets. Alright. I saw a gun of some sort. And a oddity, but we didn't get anything for that oddity. A Lumerian blaster, I think, is what we just got from him. Hello, man. We'll talk to you after we search the desk for holy crap. Tons of psionic skills, that's a lot of money. Large jar of salt. Looks like salt, but smells funny. The jar is marked with a circle and a single horizontal line in the middle. You shouldn't use this for cooking. Wonder if that's the essential salts from uh, one of the H.P. Lovecraft books. Two focus stims, a hyper, -cer hyper cerebrix, the only one I think you were absolutely guaranteed to get in the game. And another full them seven. We'll have to read that at the end of the next episode. Death lives here. Welcome to the morgue, sir. For death I came. Yes. You understand her. Who is she? Dr. Mason. Everyone died. No one lived. Yet she is unable to settle. It's her mind, you see. It's exceptional. I'm going with her because I thought it was a, gir a girl. We saw she, unless it's several people who were suffering and the and it's a guy who has been communicating with us uh, psychically and not a girl, but I thought it was a girl. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with girls for this. She can reach other minds, minds like yours. You are the first to approach her in a long, long time, sir. Why did I get these visions? Communication. She can only reach you through your mind, and only through emotions. I don't know why I'm asking why me. It's because we are the first living soul in here who can probably help kill her. Why me? There is no one else, sir. What about the other servants? They are just like me. I am simply the one closest to her. And who are you? I am but a vessel, a servant. Not hers, but yours. I am the Link. 
Do you understand her? A strong link between you two has been established. What now? Resolution, sir. I am ready. She desires, yearns for resolution. She chose death a long time ago. You understand her fully. You can help her. Why can I help her? You can endure it. You've experienced enough. I want to help. You have no other options anyway. The link is strong, and she won't let you leave without resolution. What would be the next step then? I will lead you into her chamber. She will help you with the rest, sir. And when you leave that chamber, you will be different. What is going to happen to me? Actually, no, forget it. Let's do this. I'm going in. Finally. Follow me and stay focused. You leave the morgue, shaken up by fleeting memories, as though you've woken up in the middle of a dream and trying to grasp its fading contents. Entering the morgue felt like returning to an imagined childhood home one couldn't wait to leave. The horror before your eyes was like those repressed, demented relatives. The morgue's stench, much akin to the moldy storeroom everyone used, the sinister reverberations, scheduled train passes overhead, and the acidic taste in your mouth, unpalatable batch cooking. It is this familiarity that prevented the invasive senses from overwhelming you and distracting you from reality and your goal. The mass of flesh shifting and moving and trembling before you was seemingly alive, begging not to be. Its hollow voice came from within your head, rambling about its troubled existence, every bit permeated with a desire for death. True death. And this death you granted. The method you do not remember, but the more you stare at your blood-drenched self, the more fragmented memories of this being's gory death start flashing before your eyes. Gushing blood, ripping flesh, oozing slime, and everything else. After all of this, you found yourself outside with a clear mind, a passing headache, and utter desensitization to body horror. Okay, everyone, that will do it for us. We are done. Thank you guys for watching this episode, and we'll pick back up with the rest of this in the next one. We still have the microchip implant device to go and interact with, and things will be a little different for us when we walk up there. You'll see. There's something else I wanted to quickly say, but I can't remember what it was. So, thanks again for watching, everyone, and take care. See you all in the next one.